Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to tell you why I prefer using double, double quotes. The little double, double quotes that these guys right here, they look like two double quotes together. Instead of a single quote, this guy in Microsoft Access. Last week, I released this video on how to do a double lookup, how you can use DLOOKUP to look up a value based on two other criteria. And in this video, we got talking about the double, double quote problem. And this comes up so much that I actually have another video just on this one. This one's a little older. It doesn't have as pretty of a title slide as the other ones do, the new ones do. But in this one, I talk about when to use single quotes, double quotes, and double, double quotes. If you haven't watched this one yet, go watch this one. And all of these have to do with concatenation. So this is the granddaddy of all of them. So I'll put links to all three of these videos down below. Go watch these. Oh, and while we're at it, if you don't know what DLOOKUP is, go watch this video too, because this is the example I'm going to use in today's video. Now, I got a lot of comments and emails from people saying that instead of using double, double quotes, they just use single quotes, because it's a lot easier to read and to write than having to put double, double quotes here. I made them red and bold here so you can see them better, right? Instead of all of your strings, because for a last name, for example, you'd have to put double quote, double quote, double quote to close that string right there. Yes, this is PowerPoint, I know. Okay, and then ampersand, and then your criteria, and then you'd have to put another double quote at the end of it, and that's inside of that string. And that's a lot of stuff to put into your string, whereas it's easier to just put a single quote around that last name parameter. And yeah, that's fine. This will work just fine, I'm going to say 90% of the time. But then it doesn't, and you don't know why, and your stuff doesn't work. Let me show you an example. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. It's a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I got a customer table. And let's say, let's assume, just for the purposes of class, that there's only one person with each last name in your table, and you want to look up their last name and pull any other value, let's say credit limit. All right, so type in there, because we have to use a string value, okay? And last name's nice and easy. So we're going to do that. And we'll put it right here on our main menu using DLOOKUP. Very simple to do. Very similar to what I did in the other video for the double lookup. All right, so we're going to put in last name. So let's change this guy to a last name field. So we'll say last name here. Get rid of that control source. Get rid of that format. And we'll make the data. Let's make a default value of just my last name, Rost, R-O-S-T. Okay? Okay. And we'll put the result in another field below it. So I'll copy and paste that. Control-C, Control-V. We'll put the credit limit here. So this will be our DLOOKUP. So let's get rid of that default value. And we'll go to the All tab. And we'll come up top here. And we'll name this guy Credit Limit. And the control source is where we'll put our DLOOKUP value. All right, so I'm going to zoom in, Shift-F2. And this is fairly straightforward. Equals DLOOKUP. All right, now what am I looking up? The credit limit from the customer table where last name equals. Now I can't just say last name like that and call it a day, all right, because it's a string value. So I have to enclose last name inside of double quotes, all right? Double quote there. So that's inside, that there creates one double quote inside that string, all right? You need two double quotes to get a single double quote, not a single quote. I know, it's confusing. It only took me about 25 years to get used to this stuff. <laughs> and most of that was teaching it. The more you teach something, if you want to get good at something, people, teach someone else how to do it. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's true. I always heard that you know, when I was younger, like, oh, to get really good at something, teach someone else. Yeah, it's true. By explaining this stuff to you, it, it, it solidifies in my brain. All right, now we also need another double, double quote after the name too. So we have to tack onto that a double, double, double quote inside like that. So what that is, is that's a string. Let me make this bigger so it looks, it's easier if you can see it all in one line. Come here. Okay. So that is a string, right? That's the opening and closing double quotes there and there for that string. And inside that string is one double, double quote, which will turn into a double quote. 
So that whole thing will be last name equals double quote Rost double quote. Okay, makes sense? Okay, and this should work just fine. Let's make that gray real quick because that's not something our user can type in. I like to make those fields gray. Save it, close it, open it back up again, and there we go. Put in Rost, you get 5,000. Put in Picard, you get 500. Put in Riker, and he's 29.97. Perfect. I'm assuming those values are correct, and they are. It's working just fine. Okay, now other people are saying you can use the single quote to do the same thing. No problem. Let's do that. Okay, let's come in here. Copy, paste. We'll do the same thing. All right, I'm going to make this one say with a double quote. And we're going to have this one. Actually, it's with a double, double quote. We'll just put that right in the comments there in the caption there. And this one will do with a single quote. Okay, and let's go back into here, and we'll go into the control. Let's give it a good name. What do we call this one? Credit limit. Let's make this one. It doesn't matter. Credit limit one, and then credit limit two. It, I blame Alex. He's got me naming all my fields. Okay, so control source. We're going to replace that double quote with a single quote, and this one over here with a single quote. All right, so that will look like, if you, if you were to type it in, and bring up my glorious notepad here, if you were to type it in, it would look like, come here, right? You'd have last name equals Rost, like that, instead of last name equals Rost inside your string, right? And inside the string, these get converted over to a double quote, whereas these will stay single quotes. Okay, all right, everything looks fine. Let's, let's hit okay. All right, let's save it, close it, open it up. All right, looks good, Rost. Pick card. Yeah, all right, let's try Riker. Okay, let's try O'Brien. O, single quote, B-R-I-E-N. Boom. You get an error. And that is why I don't like using single quotes. Okay, now, yes, you are sometimes... Uh, likely to come across looking up a field with a double quote in it, but it happens a whole lot less often than you might run into a single quote. You can come up with a single quote in a name field, in a title field, uh, in a, in a uh, an address field. Uh, single quotes are used all over the place, whereas a double quote, usually only something like if you're maybe looking up uh, a, a list of famous quotes and it has, like, he said, quote, something in it. So... I prefer to stick with the double double quotes, even though it's harder to write and a little harder to understand. Once you get used to it, it works a lot better because you don't have to now, because now what you'd have to do is in order for this to work, you'd have to put two of those there. And now it's not going to work with this. See what I'm saying? You have to rewrite your code to say, okay, if I come across any single quotes, I got to convert them over to double single quotes, which by the way, is what you have to do with SQL server. That's a whole different video. <laughs> because SQL Server uses single quotes around strings instead of double quotes. But we're just dealing with access for this video, folks. All right, if you did have a customer in your table, let's say Barkley here, that had, let, let's pretend this is some kind of other, you know, something else you're looking up, and it's got a, a single quote in it, okay? If you did search for Barkley here, B-A-R, where, where did I put it here? C-O-A-Y. <laughs> Boom. See, now it'll work with the single quote, but you'll get an error with the double quotes if you have that in your actual field. So what do I do? Well, if it's a field that possibly can have a double quote in it, which, you know, names can't, addresses can't, cities can't, you know, most text fields that I can think of don't have that in there unless you're dealing with like inches maybe. I don't know. Okay. But if you are looking something up from a long text field that could have a double quote in it, you can wrap your function in a um, in another function that handles that. And I just so happen to have one that I wrote. I call it the DDQ function, the double double quote function. And what it does is you put this in your DLOOKUP instead of having to deal with all of those double double quotes. It will handle the double double quotes in front of the string and after the string, and it will also what's called escaping, it'll escape any double quotes that are inside them by replacing them with double double quotes. Let me show you how it works. Here's the function. Gold members, this will be in the code vault. I'll put a link down below uh, on my website. 
Uh, everybody else, get typing. There's not much. And yes, these are all double, double quotes. Reason number 5,622 to become a gold member. The Code Vault's got lots of awesome stuff in it. So I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. Now I'm going to come back here to my database, go into a global module. You can drop this inside a form if you want to, but if you put it inside of a public module, then you can use it anywhere you want. Paste it in. Let me walk you through this real quick. It's a function, so it returns a value. It's going to return a string. It takes in a value called s as a variant. Why a variant and not a string? Because variants can handle anything, including nulls. If you try making this a string and you send a null value into it, it's going to generate an error. So the variant can handle a null. So the first thing we're going to do is check to see if ddq is null. And if it is, return an empty string. That means nothing was sent to me. So just return an empty string. Okay, and that avoids the error. However, this assumes there's something in that string s. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a double quote in front of it. And we're going to add a double quote at the end of it. Okay, we're turning it into a, a string for criteria. Okay, and then replace anytime you see one of these inside the string, replace it with two of them. Okay, so if you have a quote like he said, quote, something, okay, it'll then put those, those quotes around the something will now turn into double, double quotes. So your string will still work. Okay, so all you got to do is call DDQ. No, it's not DQ. We're not going for ice cream. Although now I kind of want ice cream. My thing is, I used to love the Oreo, or not the Oreo, the, uh, the Reese's Pieces Blizzard. And for some reason, years ago, they got rid of it. They still have the peanut butter blizzard. But why don't you have the Reese's Pieces Blizzard? Come on. I loved that. Bring it back. Anyone here works for Dairy Queen? I want that back. Please. I'll give you a free membership if you give me that back. Okay, so we're going to take this. Now we're going to replace anywhere where we have a possibility of having double quotes in our criteria, okay, with the DDQ function. How do I do that? Well, save this first. Save it. We're going to close it, okay? Give it a debug compile if you want. But now I'm going to come in here, design view, and I'm going to go into this one and go in here. And we don't, we don't need this now because we're not going to use the single quote anymore. Goodbye. We're just going to use our double quotes, and I can probably put that back to credit limit. Credit limit, right? And we're going to go into, come here, put that back to credit limit. Go into the D lookup function. All right. Now let's just chop this all off here. Okay. So our string is going to be last name and DDQ last name like that. And that's it. Because DDQ will take whatever's in that last name field here okay it'll make sure there are no double double quotes or no double quotes in it and if if so replace them with double double quotes and then it'll put this whole thing inside of double quotes and that gets returned right there and now save it close it open it back up again boom there it is and if we do have a barclay in our table it works see and that, my friends, is why I prefer using double, double quotes instead of single quotes in my criteria and in my SQL statements while I'm working with Access, of course. You can do something similar. I've got a similar function that I wrote uh, for my ASP server using SQL server as the backend. Because with SQL, even if you're working in Access and you're using pass through queries, you still got to put your, your, uh, your SQL statements, your strings inside of single quotes. It takes some getting used to, but again... If we're just, we're just focusing on access today. I really appreciate all the comments. I've got a bunch of comments um, on, uh, on my website, on my YouTube channel, uh, by email. I got most of them by email. Um, and so I appreciate your feedback. And that prompted this video. And I wanted to share this with everybody. So thank you. And uh, I hope you guys learned something today. And uh, I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, 
click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.